So hi everyone, my name is John Alexis Garra Gomez and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to D3 and D3 data bindings, which is uh, the most important concept to understand in D3 and took, which took me like three months to understand or maybe three years, I don't remember anymore. Anyhow, uh, we're going to be using this example that I created later, uh, but for the moment let's start from scratch. So what I'm going to do is just open the terminal in here, make this bigger. I'm going to go into the desktop and then I'm going to create a folder called data binding. So inside that folder I'm going to start Sublime, which is my favorite uh, editor of choose. And then in there I'm actually going to create a file. Uh, so I'm going to create a new file and save that as an index.html file. I'm going to use a trick here from Emmet uh, that lets me create a template. So I'm going to say this is D3 data binding. And then inside that, I actually can start creating things like D3, like a header that says D3 data binding. Okay, so the next thing is that I actually want to see that reflecting on the browser. So many people just double click on the file, which will work for the moment you don't have data, but the moment you have data, it changes. And what I'm going to do in here is to use a module from npm, the node package manager, that it's called reload. If you don't have it, then just go ahead and install it with npm install minus g and reload. And once you have done that, then you can just run reload dash b, and that will actually inside the folder where you have the data binding or the, the, the files. And then the nice thing about that is that I can actually start creating my stuff in here, like for instance, create a target and then another one that says, uh, may look with love uh, by John. And then every, moment, every time I save, you will see that it actually reflects and shows the changes in here. Now, since we are using D3, we need to include the library. So for that, you use the script tag and then the source um, attribute. Uh, basically, we are going to be using the D3 JS website. Uh, sorry, Mike, if we are hitting you too hard on that, but thank you for D3 and providing this mini CDN. And then basically in there we can start writing our JavaScript script in here. So this is kind of the bare bones example that you need for this. Now, <coughs> in order to see how this works, you can go here to the developer tools of Chrome, um, which you can open with command control J or something like that. And that will give you a console. And if you did everything all right in here, you should be able to see the tree in here. Okay. So let's start using D3. So the first concept you need to use on D3 is something called selections. So selections will take uh, some elements. You is going to search for something on the DOM, which is this HTML part in here. And then I'm going to identify one of those tags. So in that tag I'm going to identify is this one that says target. And what I'm going to do that is with hash, just because we use ID in here. We have a use something like class, then it should have been dot target. And since it's an ID, then we're going to be doing this. And then I'm actually going to say that it's a nice variable. And then this is going to return a selection. And inside that selection, you can do many things. Like, for instance, you can append a paragraph. And inside that paragraph, I'm going to put the text on. And if I run this several times, because I'm so narcissistic, then you will see three Johns in there. But only John Chulani. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the whole idea is that you can actually see that I'm modifying the uh, virtual DOM in here because I don't didn't have those paragraphs in here and if I actually reload the page uh, then you will see that they disappear because I'm only running this locally here in the console anyhow let's add them again I wanted to show you that if you right click in here this is useful for debugging and inspect this then you will see that on the HTML, this is kind of the virtual DOM that is being modified by JavaScript through D3. And then you see that I have three elements in here, the three joins that I just created. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to switch in here. And then I'm going to change this for a target and say D3, same thing we had before. I'm going to select the same target. And basically, I'm going to cheat in there a little bit. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take that target. And in this case, I'm not going to use a select. I'm going to use a select all. And what I'm going to select is all the paragraphs that are inside the target. Problem is, as you can see in here, there are no targets in there. 
So this is really weird. And bear with me for a second. Moreover, what I'm going to do in there is that I'm actually going to assign some data to that. I'm going to put some values in there, and something like this. Um, and then, on top of that, I'm going to say enter, and I'm going to explain that in a second. So I'm going to add a paragraph for each one of those, and then I'm going to change the text to, guess what, John. So when I save this, then you can see that I actually created four Johns. And then the interesting thing about this is that we are going to have as many Johns as I have data elements in my array. So basically what Deeply is doing in here is that it's taking a selection, in this case it's a selection of all the paragraphs that are inside this, which by the moment are nothing, and then inside that uh, selection it's actually doing a matching with whatever data you pass in here. It's assigning each one of, uh, of these elements to a paragraph, and then it's created them uh, in here, and then I'm changing that value. That doesn't really look that useful, uh, because it's too many jumps. But if you actually replace this with a function, which is one of the other concepts that if you're not familiar with JavaScript, can be a little bit difficult to understand. Uh, and then that function, you just take whatever datum you receive in here, and then you return that same element. Then what you're going to see in here is that we have one element with the one, and then another one with the, with the cuatro, <laughs> which is four in Spanish, if you haven't gotten the joke. Um, now, what is happening in here is that this is a function that is not really being called the moment of execution. It's a function that D3 is passing uh, in internals. And then for each element in this array, it's actually running that function. Okay? So uh, if you actually, for instance, put in here a uh, console log, and then you say uh, inside or whatever, and then you save that, then you will see that it's actually running two times, one for each one of those elements. Okay? So the first parameter of that, which is usually the, you can put whatever value you want in there. It doesn't really matter what name you use, but usually in most examples of my postdoc and everyone else, you will see the, because it's the datum. And then if you actually pass another one with the i, then you will see that that is the index of the element. So I can actually change this for i, and then you will see this is 0 and 1. Okay? To make things more clear, what we can say is actually create a string that concatenates i equals plus i, which is the value of i, and then d equals, and then uh, pass d2. Okay? So when I do that, it's basically index 0, and then this is the data element. Okay? That is super nice, super cool, uh, but it actually will break in a second, and I'm going to show you why. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a function, and that function I'm going to call update, and that update is going to receive some data. I'm going to put this part, that is the one that actually does the drawing. I'm going to put that inside that. Then, uh, basically, I'm going to replace the whatever data we are passing in here as fixed, as whatever we receive in the function. And then I'm going to call update, and again, I'm going to pass a data array. So when I do that, you can see that I'm actually creating those elements. This is very nice. I can actually start adding more uh, elements to that, and it will create one for each one of those, which is kind of a very stupid and basic visualization. But then uh, there is something that doesn't really make sense, and is that if I call update again, what will happen? So if I call this again, and then I say after, I should see at least one after it, and it's actually nothing is happening. So is our function run? But look, if I actually comment out this one, the first one, and then I run this, then it works. So why is that happening? So actually, if I run this like this, it's actually even more confusing, because what you get is the first after, and then everything else is 2, 3, 5, 4, 3. So why is this first one not 1? You see what I'm doing? So that is because of the data binding, which is the very uh, main concept of D3. So, to understand that, we are going to change this. And then we are going to understand that there are three uh, uh, sets that are created every time you do a data binding. So, this is the actual data binding. Okay? So, um, what you're doing is that you select all, and very important, uh, do that selection inside another selection, such that the elements get created inside that. Okay? Then I'm saving that selection inside this then uh, that gives you three sets. So I can actually have one set in here, that is the enter, 
that are the things that need to be created. Things to be created. Okay. Then you will have another second set uh, that is the update. Oops. Update and uh, there are things to be updated. And you access that just by the bare bones selection, PS. You don't need to do PS.update. And then finally, you need another one that is the exit, is the things to be removed. Okay? So when I do that, uh, and that you access this with PS.exit. Okay? So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to tell it uh, on the PS.update, uh, which is just PS. I'm just going to copy this function. So this is the function that does the text, and that is going to do the update. And you can see that now this one changed from after to actually doing it right. Uh, you can see that uh, by undoing what I was doing and cloning this again, you can see that actually was after. And then with that, uh, we have the correct value for that. Okay, So that is the beginning. <laughs> um, uh, but in order to understand this, let's use some colors. This is supposed to be visualization. So let's use some style. And then I'm going to change the color from this. And then I'm going to use like something like still blue. Okay. And then for the update, I'm going to use yet another color. Um, let's try to get something relaxable in there, like for instance, dark blue or something like that. So when I do that, you see that actually this element changed in dark blue. And these elements in here stay with that one. And then in the exit, I'm actually going to change, and that is, by the way, style changes the style of an element, if you haven't guessed that already. I'm going to change this for red. And when, you, when I do that, um, um, you see that nothing is in red in there. But if I put this this way, you see that the first one gets updated to after, and then everything else should be removed, but it hasn't been removed. So if you actually want to remove those, and the way, why is this working this way? Is that the first update, it's calling, it's drawing everything, and then on the second update, it is updating the first element, changing that with after, that's why it has dark blue. And then since I got rid of all of these elements from here, uh, it's actually uh, saying, oh, all of those should be removed, okay? So uh, if you actually get want to get rid of them, which is kind of the common thing to do, Basically, what you just do is you just say remove in here, and then they will disappear. And then with that, actually, you have an update that actually works. And I can keep on calling here update, and then I can put new values, like 1, 2, 3 again, and then it should show that. Then I can call this again, and then you see that everything is in the update. I can remove one, and then uh, you can see that it's going to get rid of that. And updating these two, I can get rid of everything. And then I can call one, two again, and those two are going to be created. But if I do one, two, three, the first two are already being created. The only ones that needs to be created is the third one. So these ones are updated, and this is the third one that is actually being um, removed. Now, something that can be a little bit complicated to understand um, it's how D3 is handling the which one should be updated and how is do, doing the matching. Right now, it is doing the matching by the position. So if I actually get rid of the two in here, and run this again, you'll see that it's actually not uh, removing that one, but it's actually updating things. And if you actually, if you if you want to see which elements are getting removed and which one elements are are getting created, um, basically what you can change is that here on the data, you can specify what is going to be the way that you're going to identify the data elements. In this case, I'm going to say is by the actual data element, and by doing that, uh, it will know that things are change, not changing. So for instance, um, if I call this with 1 and 3, it's going to get rid of the after, so that is going to get removed, and then it's adding 1 and 3. Okay. So these two are new, so that's why this is still blue. But um, actually, I think I should add a little bit more, so there you go. Uh, so now, if I get rid of the tree, and then I, I do it like this, then and then add like a four, basically, what it's doing is that the one and three are getting updated, and then it's adding this one in here. That is the latest one. Okay. Now, the other trick that is very important to understand in here, it's that many times you don't want to have to repeat all of these elements. So. Um, 
all of these things in here. Like this function is the same that you have in the first one. So if you want to make things simpler, if you just want to have something that just have uh, these ones, then you can use something else that it's called merged. And merge, what it's doing is that you can actually say something like uh, on the enter, this is the enter, I'm going to merge this with ps. So all, all the way here is actually having enter, and inside that enter, I'm merging with a, with a ps. And then I'm actually going to put this before the merge, so this only gets applied to the first one. And then basically with the merge, it's, uh, it's going to be assigning this to the two of the two elements. Okay? So I actually removed too much in there, and that's why I was getting an error. And then with that, basically, uh, you're running this same thing on the two things. Another easier way of understanding this, and you will see that many times, especially when you need to append many things inside one element, is that you can save the PS enter just by doing this. Okay, and then um, uh, you can, um, for instance, save it all the way to here, and then with the PS enter, um, you can say put this one in here. That is the part that is only going to be running for the enter. And then here I want to say ps enter merge ps. So this is kind of like enter plus update. And this is only update. You can do it the other way around too. So you can also say ps and then put ps enter here. Okay? So uh, with that I just want to show you two more things. And is that if for instance if you say d3 bar chart and you look for an example by Mike Bostock, and here is a bar chart in that bar chart you will see that here is the main element that is actually doing the drawing. And as you can see, he is only using the enter. So if you were to copy this code and then put that inside a function and try to do the update, uh, it will not work because you're only handling one of the sets. So you actually have to handle the update and the exit too. And uh, finally, here is where these things become useful. In this example, you can actually practice and understand what goes in the enter, what goes in the update, and what goes in the exit. So if I take this example and I get rid of all of this, and then I say update, then it's telling you on the enter is not putting anything because I haven't added anything. It's updating A, B, C, D, and E because those were already there. And then it got rid of F to C. Okay? If I actually, from this one, if I remove C and D, and then leave E, and then keep, for instance, Z, then you will see C is actually got entered, A, B, and E got updated, and Z and E are actually the ones that got removed. So you can actually practice with that. So I hope this helps you understand the data binding pattern. If not, you can ask me questions in the comments and let me know if you like the video. Okay?